Hello and welcome to Vox Markets. I am John Hewitt and I'm joined today by Joanna Foyle, newly appointed non-executive director of Ad Tech Group, Myriad Advertising. Welcome, Joanna. Thanks so much, John. Pleasure to be here. Nice to see you. Nice to have you on. Um, so you were appointed uh, as a non-exec at Myriad at the beginning of July. Perhaps you could tell us sort of uh, how that came about, we, uh, a bit about your career before uh, before you uh, you got to Myriad and, and what you continue to do outside of Myriad. Oh, sure. Of course. Yeah. Happy to talk about that. Uh, so uh, long, relatively long career in the advertising technology space, uh, spanning across advertising agencies, uh, technology companies, data companies, and so including both the buy side, meaning like where brands and advertisers live, as well as um, on the on the sell side with with publishers and and technology providers that sit in between the two. And so, um, you know, I came to Myriad actually because I was uh, in the middle of contemplating what would come next for me, and was introduced to Stefan and the team there, and just you know, first and foremost was just incredibly impressed with the team. It's it's a great group of folks who I think continue to hone focus in particular um, on the US market, but as well as you know, really hone the opportunity before them, particularly as the CTV space continues to evolve. Um, and certainly the technology as well. I just, I really saw the value opportunity before them as far as um, my recent experience. Um, my most recent experience was at the trade desk and I ran um, the, the global inventory operation there and just having worked really closely with some of the largest programmers, publishers, um, cable companies in the in the world, really saw the opportunity that they bring to expand revenue um, in term beyond just those more legacy models in, in television. So I'm excited to be part of the team. It's, it's recent, but I'm thrilled to be in the mix. Mm. So, um, I mean, you you know, the, this is a fast moving space. You know, you, you've, you've mentioned sort of, you know, ad, ad technology, the, the kind of data behind it. And it seems to have you know, really accelerated in the past few years. You must have seen a lot of change. Where, where do you think the industry is going and, and sort of how Myriad potentially fits into that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, yes to lots of change. And I think in particular, you know, things were already evolving quite a bit. But then once you layered the pandemic on top of everything, you know, as we all know, as consumers, right, be it television, audio, you know, all of that at home consumption just went through the roof and really accelerated any plans that any companies had to try new ad models, improve their technology stacks and really continue to invest in that space. And so, you know, I think primarily in terms of change over the last couple of years in particular, and where Myriad fits into that, that I saw was one, you know, the kind of traditional CTV providers, right? Like the biggest content owners, programmers, the Skies, the Viacoms, the um, Disney's of the world, um, first got got really invested and much more sophisticated about their technology stacks and making sure that they could offer as differentiated and innovative ad placements as they possibly could to brands and advertisers. And so Myriad certainly fits into that. They were also really interested for the first time in trying to figure out, you know, there's there's constraint that comes from that legacy ad model of having those linear commercials that we're all used to seeing. They like the constraint a little bit because it creates scarcity, right? But they're also mm -hmm. always looking for ways to increase, increase revenue and, and better monetize that content. And so if, if technology like Myriad can be layering on additional ad placements into the content itself, that sits either alongside or in lieu of some of those commercial ad breaks, there's real opportunity for those publishers. And then the last thing I'll say is separate from those traditional publishers, when you look at companies like Netflix or other, as I affectionately refer to them, advertising reluctant content owners and distributors, the opportunity before them is enormous in terms of an ad model. They're, you know, Netflix in particular, finally coming to the conclusion that they will need to have ad-supported ad content. And I just think a company like Myriad for companies like that um, offers an amazing alternative to that legacy model that we all know consumers appreciate more, but can still supp you know, can still add revenue into the mix for that content. So I just see tons of opportunity for the company. Yeah, the, the whole Netflix uh, uh, saga that's been rumbling on over the summer has been, has been very, very interesting. And, and uh, you know, as, as you mentioned, they, they're talking about uh, an ad model. I think Disney Disney Plus are talking about one uh, as well. Um, yep, they're releasing that this fall. Yep. Yeah, I mean it's it's quite interesting, but but I, I mean 
I would imagine there's going to be some consumer resistance to, to these ad models, um, or the you know the sort of traditional ad models. And, and actually, Myriad have done some research, which you, which you've probably seen, um, which show consumer preferences for the in content um, in content advertising approach. I mean, do you think this is a shift that's going to you know be, accelerate in the in the years ahead? So, I mean, I, and I also don't know necessarily that it's all or nothing, right? I think if you're a brand or an ad or an agency, an advertising agency, you know, maybe you make the case that a, a proper discrete commercial is a different consumer experience, better or worse to be, to be decided potentially, but certainly a different consumer experience than one that's more passively baked into the content. Um, but that's all the more reason why I don't know that it's an either or. I absolutely think there's tons of room for there to be more in content advertising, you know, and perhaps it gives all of us the opportunity to take a little bit of a break from those classic, that classic commercial pod model that I think as consumers, we can all agree um, has room for improvement. Yeah, which is the time we usually go and make a cup of tea or something, the uh, the, the kind of ad slots. Um, and we still haven't figured out frequency capping, right? You see the same one over and over and over again. I mean, it just, there's, there's a lot of room to still be done to, even if that can, even if that ad experience were going to be exactly the same, there's still a lot of ways to make it better. Mm, absolutely. Um, I mean, just in terms of the challenges the industry faces, uh, you know, not not just the specific challenges of, of companies like Netflix, but but we have a, a you know some some serious economic uh, worries that that hang over us. And obviously, you know, the the advertising industry is is, is a place where you you would expect to see some of that that economic pain coming through. What what's your sort of view on the bigger picture for for the ad industry at the moment? Yeah, I mean, I think, listen, yeah, you know, this is, doesn't have to be the world according to me. You can read any of the trade um, magazines in the advertising space and hear that people are concerned about seeing softening into Q3, Q4, Q1, just due to the economic uncertainty globally that's that's happening. Um, and the U.S. is certainly not immune to that, which is where the lion's share of my focus has been lately. Um but, you know, inevitably it surges back, right? There's, you know, advertising is, is a cost center, as we all know, and, and hopefully um, opportunities to, to, you know, make incremental dollars, which is what we see with, with companies like Myriad, hopefully stems some of that softening. But, I mean, yeah, I think it's pretty widely known and understood at this point that, um, people are a little bit nervous and then budgets tend to get impacted when that's the case. Mm. Do, do you think with that nervousness, there's going to be uh, sort of closer scrutiny of the effectiveness of, of, of advertising expenditure? Um, something I spoke to, to to your chief exec, Stefan Berenger, about, you know, that um, that actually this kind of in-content advertising ha has actually better engagement, better effectiveness than, than, than perhaps some of the older models. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I mean, listen, if you're a company that can't prove out improved or better efficacy from from what you're asking somebody to to test or to take on like i wouldn't want to be in your position right now you know myriad's in a great position where they've done multiple sets of research that just continue to prove over and over again that you know it's a better consumer experience it works more effectively for brands and agencies and so it's it's and oh, hopefully the publishers are making more money in the process so the idea is that it's it's win 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 across the board so given your experience in, in the ad industry, what, what, what's your, you know, what are you specifically hoping to bring to Myriad to, to kind of help it on its journey and realize that, you know, the massive potential that sits, sits with this company and the technology that it has? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think for me, what, what I hope to bring to Stefan and to the team is, is, you know, certainly deep U.S. experience. My role at the trade desk was global, but um, Myriad in particular is, is really um, expecting to make major inroads into the U.S. and North American markets in the coming you know, 12 to 18 months. And we're already seeing some of that momentum. And so um, to be a thought partner to him and, and somebody who can hopefully help, you know, make introductions and, and help uh, continue to facilitate the momentum they're already seeing is definitely a part of it. And then you know, hopefully just bring additional perspective. It's hard when you're, I know firsthand from my own operating experience that it's hard when you're in a small business to to keep that external perspective and really be able to think uh, with some objectivity about your own business and your own strategy. And so if, if I can be a good partner to him and to the team in those efforts as well, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to do that. Right. It sounds like, uh, it sounds like you've got a lot to bring to the, to the party, to the Myriad party. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a, a pleasure talking to you and uh, good luck in your new role. Thanks so much, John. I really appreciate it. Take care.